we've got a, a lot of great energy today. We're going to have some fun. Um, super excited about today's power meeting. Um, so first of all, can I start off by saying I, I don't care to get into appointments or go to appointments or go to meetings that I don't understand what the objective is. Is anybody else like that? Yeah. Everybody. Yes or yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Because what ends up happening is that sometimes we fumble through those conversations and you leave that meeting and you're like, what just happened? Right? What was that about? Right? Thank you. So is it fair for me to share with you what the objective of these power meetings are? So you guys are clear with it? Please Not share clear, with us. And then at the end we'll find out if we you know, basically achieved our goal. That makes sense, right? Here's, here's my goal. I, I sent out a, an email yesterday. Um, I've been honored to be your guys' team leader uh, over the last four years. And as a team leader, I love this opportunity to get together with my team. Who's my team? We are. You guys are, All right? right? Yeah. And you guys are having a lot of success with it. So as my team members, what I'm looking at doing at this hour, twice a month, first and third Thursday of the month, I'm looking to give you the advanced tools that this industry is looking at right now so you become the real estate professional of choice. Is that fair? Yes. Sounds fair. Yes. So here's what I want to do. As your team leader, I want to earn the right to get four hours a month out of your calendar. What? <laughs> what? Now here's the, here's the thing. Here's what I'm thinking about, right? Um, I'm thinking to myself, there's a lot of people in the audience that make uh, over $100 an hour. And by the way, if you're not one of them, that's my goal. All right? And so if you're making 100 bucks an hour, and I'm asking for four hours a month, what does this meeting have to be worth? Got it. 400. One, one meeting here. 100 bucks an hour. 100 bucks an hour. <laughs> section in a little bit, right? All right, but I love it. You know what? If it's worth 400 of that, then I know that it's going gonna, it's gonna to make sure that you guys are there. But what I'm getting at, guys, is I've got to have a compelling enough reason for you guys to be here today and every Thursday. Does that make sense? Yes. So if I'm you guys and I'm talking to a client and they say, you know, thanks, but I'm, I'm just not interested in getting together today, are they rejecting you or did you maybe not give them a compelling enough reason to get together with you? The latter. Right? You didn't give them a compelling enough reason. So what I plan on doing is making sure we give compelling reasons to make sure this place is filled. Because my goal is to have 75 of my team members come to these meetings every single week. And by the way, we have power meetings on the first and third uh, Thursday. From usually 11 to 12 o'clock, we're doing 1030 to 1130 today because the general membership meeting with uh, Dr. Lawrence Young, uh, with SCAR, there's some people who wanted to do that. Um, on the second Thursday is the ALC meeting. Guys, this is the core group of agents in your market center that are really the tip of the spear. And you're going to have an opportunity to be included in that, and I'd love to see you be in attendance for that. And then the fourth Thursday of the month is actually the ALC committees, committees, where the ALC committee is actually leading their committees at that time frame, from Thursday from 11 to 12. Does that make sense? Those are the four hours I'm looking for. I want to earn that in your book. You guys catch that? I don't want to obligate you to come. I want to earn it. So will you guys hold me accountable to that? Yes. Yeah. So here's how I know if I'm doing good. If the population grows, we're winning. If the population shrinks, I'm not doing so well. Right? So you're giving me feedback every day. All right, so how do we start off each one of our power meetings? Affirmation. Affirmations, right? I'm a great salesperson. 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 There's some guests with us today that are like, what? I'm out. I appreciate all of you that are guests. The whole energy in the room went up, though. Did you not feel it now? Woo! Woo! I thought you guys were tingling. All right, here's the cool thing. So I like affirmations because it does. It gives you that energy, right? 
I'm trying to be a student of it because I still can't totally figure it out. So I want to, you know, the area where everybody gets all their information, Wikipedia, right? And so Wikipedia tells me that affirmations, this is what they are, this is what they define affirmations. In new thought and new age terminology refers primarily to the practice of positive thinking and self-empowerment, fostering a belief that a positive mental attitude supported by affirmations will achieve success in anything. More specifically, an affirmation is a carefully formatted statement that should be repeated to oneself and written down frequently. For an affirmation to be effective, it needs to be present tense, positive, personal, and specific. I write that last part down. It needs to be present tense, positive, personal, and specific. I am with the two strongest words in the English dictionary. It depends on what comes after that, right? I was thinking about this definition, about a conversation that I had on Friday with an agent that was just having a, a, a less than stellar day. Has anybody else been in, in the real estate world and had a less than stellar day? <laughs> AM or PM. AM or PM, right? Yeah. So she could, this is the honest truth. She came to me and she said, you know what, I, you know, I'm, I'm beat up. I had two mutual releases, one, one per approval that got declined, and then I've actually got a buyer that's AWOL. Ooh. I mean, that's, I mean, that, I mean, that's, she was a punching bag that day, right? And so here's the thing. Um, everybody in each one of those transactions was convinced that the deal was done. Now, that only matters if she believes that the deal's done, right? I mean, you guys don't have to will some of this to the closing table. Basically, you stop believing that it's going to happen. It, it is. It's done at that point, right? So if that's something to share with you. This stuff is real. It works, right? So leading into that, we also talk about some of our successes with, with uh, uh, what's going on in the world right now in real estate. And, and there's a lot of awesome stuff that you guys are doing right now in our local industry. And this is your opportunity to share. Guys, this is one I'm going to ask you. My name is Debbie Hopkins, and I'm in the launch program. say because of the launch program, I have, at the very beginning, I, my head was filled with things. Yeah. And between real estate school and Ignite and everything else. And I put off going to launch because I didn't need one more thing in my head. And I just accidentally sat into a class one day and it was like, oh my gosh, it's making sense. It's putting all that I, that's out there, all the tools that are out there for me. It, put it all together and it made everything click. Um, for example, last two weeks ago, I did an open house and because I was prepared, I knew the area, I knew what was going on, um, I got a cash buyer to put a contract on the open house, on the actual home that I was doing. Very <laughs> Debbie, 
How long have you been in the industry? Since June. June. Months. A few months here, basically. Yeah, that's some pretty advanced uh, techniques that you're using there. Uh, if I'm one of those top agents, I might be thinking, that sounds like it's working, right? Just some thoughts. Awesome stuff. I love it, Debbie. Stephanie. Um, well, I want to brag on one of our buyer specialists who took um, six weeks off uh, to have a baby. And uh, even with that, so she is going to be, after her closing in March, she's going to have March, April, May, June, and July. She'll have five months of 100% coffee. That is, is she did a lot of prospects, she did a lot of you know things so that she was set up to take the time off and she's worked in her database and worked on the leads that she has now so um, it just shows you that if you're consistent you can have a hundred percent cap and expires go after expires guys because Jesse set us up on a great program in like November and December and we had five expired appointments um, in the last two weeks and one of the expires we took over from another agent we have the market for every year, and we sold it in less than a week at six twenty-five. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Woo! I love it. Thank you very much, Doug. Baby and cat. Baby and cat. That's, that's a pretty big. Yeah, that's pretty big. That's, that's pretty big year. Yeah, that's a good year, right? Yeah. I'm looking at someone's attention there. I know. Yeah. Edwina. I'd like to make the launch. All the pleasure that was coming. We have seventeen people in launch right now. This is really fantastic. But I did want to share, we use the pipeline to as a visual and for accountability. And Dan, who got the lines at the same time as Debbie, is that not correct? He couldn't be here today, but I brought his pipeline. I want to ask how many <coughs> experienced agents have a pipeline like this? Rhetorical question, yeah. and I'll make it feel bad. <laughs> that actually commit to using the pipeline report, what does that do for them? What are some byproducts of that? For one thing, it, it is just because it keeps you focused and it's also, we have, you know, if you're down here, we want to move you up, 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 and it keeps you focused all the time. You have a visual, most people are visual anyhow. And it just has this in front of you. And at launch, every Monday, we review these. We, and if you're having uh, an issue on moving somebody here up to here, we talk about it. We give ideas and we share ideas on how to move them on up. But I just thought this was huge. I'm sorry he couldn't be here to get the praise on this. But this is not unusual. This is not an unusual pipeline. It's just very common that this is what we do. And then John calls me accountable because I can do a pipeline too. So it's just all the way around the world in there. But I do want to say we just really uh, appreciate all the support that the agents give us in the office. and. Um, we always like ideas and you know share what you have with us and to support us. And it's really a great program, I think. Love it. Very good. Love it. Awesome. Great job. <laughs> what, what's the other thing? What's one of the great things that are going on in your business? Anybody else? It's your opportunity. You hold your peace. Come on, I know good stuff's happening. All right. Alicia. Uh, we've been a little slow over the last couple of months. <coughs> that right there. You know, we go over it every week, and those, what I've been working on, even though we've been a little slow lately, the people on, on this pipeline are starting to come out of the woodwork and awesome. say, I'm ready to do this, I'm ready to do so that. So for those of us who don't know what a pipeline is, tell me what it is, Alicia. Well, um, you know, I just started doing it about a year or so ago, so I don't really know if it's going to mesh with what she's saying, but um, it's just all, when I make contacts, and it's, you know, especially if it's someone that's, I'm going to do this in six months, or I'm thinking about it in six months, or I'm thinking about it in three months, or a year even. I go all the way up, um, you know, or they've talked to a <coughs> lender and they can't get it right now. They go on my pipeline. I love that. So basically it's a tool that allows you to go and keep track of all those people that say, maybe not now, uh -huh. right? Because I know when I was in production and still, you know, every once in a while, I don't know about you guys, but I, I do love the advent of the post-it note and I use it quite frequently. <laughs> there is a challenge, however, with the post-it note. 
from time to time, you stick it in places where you forget about it, right? <laughs> Which, by the way, is a phenomenal lead generation strategy. If you're using post-it notes, go dig all those out, maybe once a quarter. Um, or maybe you can plus that by just logging all that information on a pipeline report. I gotta be honest with you guys, it is one of the most simple tools that I could possibly imagine that could impact your business in the most massive way. Uh, the unfortunate thing is because it's so <coughs> simple and easy, people don't understand the gravity of it and they don't use it. Um, all I can do is, is implore you and help uh, share the, the thank you by sharing the testimonials and the benefit evidence of that, that tool because it is that powerful. It is. Really appreciate it, guys. Some great things are happening, guys. So we want to continue talking about the successes so we can share that with our clients, right? Tell them what's going on in the market. I got some pretty, what I thought was shocking information about what's happening in the market. We're going to touch on that. Um, first of all, I'm going to go ahead and bring Miss Stephanie Theobald and Miss Jesse Jackson up. If you guys could please welcome them to the front. So you guys just got back from one of the top national real estate symposiums in the entire nation, um, known as Family Reunion. So we're going completely unfiltered, um, unplugged, Unscripted. zero live. script. This yeah. is this is live. So um, I guess the first thing for those of us that haven't been to one of these types of events, just kind of explain the energy, the environment, that that sort of piece of it. Well, I'm going to let Jessie go first because she was a first time, and then I'll kind of give everyone like her view, and then I'll give mine. Well, everyone always said it was like this huge event, and I didn't really think it was that big. Like when the first time I walked into the convention center, I mean, it's just people everywhere. And every class I went to, I got a floor spot because I wasn't there early enough and all the chairs were taken. So it was insane. There were so many people there, and it was, it was a lot of fun. If you had to guess, I mean, how many folks do you think were there? Well, I, I <laughs> 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 well one of my classes said 11,000. 11,000 realtors, basically. Just realtors, realtors right. yeah. Realtors. And the, here's the way that I look at it. This, I mean, was going to family reunion, was the registration free, was the flight free, was the stay free? Yeah. No, it's actually it's an investment in your business. A pretty decent investment, right? Mm -hmm. So you've got 11,000 plus realtors that made a fairly significant investment to their business. That's a demonstration of their commitment. So those are probably the top people in the industry. Is that what you saw, or would that be valid, or what do you call it? That's, that's what, the way I would feel, yeah. They're making a huge investment in themselves. Right, okay, awesome. Stephanie, what, what would you add to that, or? Well, the, what I want to add is, each year you go, you're in a different point in your business, so you're going to concentrate on other classes. What, you have, what I like about Family Reunion is, there's hundreds of breakout sessions. And it can be from building your team, to a solo agent, to hiring your first admin, Google, I mean, it has everything from technology to, I mean, just, wouldn't you agree? I mean, there's just everything. I mean, there are sometimes you couldn't decide what class you wanted to go to. Um, and some of the classes held 400 people, some of the classes held 1,200 people. So I can kind of show you, you know, so it's a great networking um, event. But the, the speakers and the people that they have are just phenomenal. They're top producing. And they're not all Keller Williams agents. They're from all over. You know? I love it. I love it. So, um, guys, you, you were kind enough to text me and email me and call from time to time and tell me some of the things that were happening down there, and I was able to live vicariously through you. Um, but we haven't had any sort of extensive conversation, so I'm literally just going to give you the floor for five or ten minutes. And you just, anything that you think is compelling to share with the audience today, this is you got the floor. Go for it. Um, well, why don't you kind of go over the classes that you went with? You know, because there's people building teams that might. Yeah, I took some uh, like executive assistant classes, and I also took some classes on like training and hiring like new buyer specialists. And uh, that class actually helped a lot because some of the stuff that we should have been doing, we weren't doing. So now we know going forward, hiring more buyer specialists to what to, what to do. And then I also took a lot of technology classes too, to learn about our SEO and getting getting us up there on the Google rankings, basically. So I just I kind of took a wide variety of classes. Um, well, and, and one class you did take is um, Monica Reynolds. So yeah, the class for Monica Reynolds was the path from executive assistant to assistant executive, and I really just wanted to take a class because I took the perfect real estate assistant class in San Diego in November. This was by far even better than that class. It was amazing. I learned. I took eight pages of notes in an hour. <laughs> So, and my hand hurt afterwards, but um, that class was awesome. I learned so much from that class, and they had a panel of like four other people 
in my position up there, they're kind of telling like what they did and how each one of them was a little bit different. So I learned a lot from that class. That was. Can I ask a question on that? So you said executive assistant to assistant executive. What's the difference? Um, the way that they described it is an executive assistant is someone that's like helping out the rainmaker nonstop. The assistant executive is the one that's running the show, so the rainmaker doesn't have to be there. That's our goal. That's what we're working towards. So that's why we took that class so that. Jesse can be that person okay. if, she, if, she, if that's what's in her plan. Well, so, so what's maybe one thing you took away that <coughs> what was like the most powerful thing? Um, accountability, probably. Um, not just for the buyer's agents or the rainmaker for myself too, because I, what I should have been doing, holding people accountable, I wasn't. And so basically one girl even said, she's like, you gotta own it. That's your job, own it and do it. Mm -hmm. So that was a huge aha for me. So how, how, what were some strategies that folks were doing that to kind of create more accountability and ownership? Um, actually, some of them were quite hilarious. Um, one of the girls said that her Rainmaker never would would do lead gen for like a half hour and then stop. Why? Wait, 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 wait. A <laughs> Rainmaker squirrel, would squirrel. lead generate? Yeah, they would stop. Like they would get distracted. I've never, never seen it. Never seen it. <laughs> <laughs> You've seen Jesse running or looking for me in your office. <laughs> uh, the one girl sat outside the Rainmaker's door and every time he would get up, she'd be like, where are you going? And she, he would just sit back down. And then he would always like turn around and go to get on his computer when he was on the phone. So she took his mouse and keyboard away. Like she just like started taking stuff from him. So eventually she's like, now if he like gets up during Legion, he sees me looking at him, he'll just sit back down and be like. <laughs> so. so just so you guys know, you're gonna be seeing some changes in our office. Um, buyers agents will be ready because Jesse's a. Uh, uh, we've given her the permission that she's gonna be in charge of that and a few other things. So. Um, be ready. That's all I can say. That's cool. So yeah. thank you for that. I mean, because what I heard you say there is there's a there's a, a trans there's a power there's a control transfer there basically. Yeah. yeah that's pretty cool. I like that. Yeah. All right, Stephanie, what 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 are, what are some things that you're you're compelled that got you uh, all excited about uh, family? Well, I concentrated on um, you know for me building out our team and and so that our you know vision can continue to grow and that everyone feels like they've got something to work towards. So. I would say probably the very, very best class I went to, they were all awesome. I didn't have to walk out of any of the Hillian one that was mediocre or whatever. But I went to uh, Gene Rivers. I don't know if anyone knows Gene, but look him up online. Gene Rivers owns, um, I think, four locations in Florida. Plus, he's an investor. I mean, he's just, he's got a team. It's, it's amazing what he's, he's done. And um, he did a class called Secrets of High Performing Agents. And the number one thing that I, the very first thing is, they have a book club and they have to read, every year they reread the MREA book. They do a chapter a week because he wants his group to also be accountable because they're running their own business within his team. Um, I got that and then he says a NORC chart is a must. That's what we're currently working on because you, you need to show the path of opportunity for team members. Hold oh, on, what's an organizational chart? Um, you know, what you, you need to have your chart the way it is now and what your future chart looks like. So basically what your organizational chart's gonna be. Um, because he says on that chart, you have to show a path of opportunity for team members, share it with your affiliates, they'll help you find top talent, and then match the roles with the right people, be slow to hire, quick to fire. Sounds like recruits fly. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yep, now he brought that up. Throw, throw that out there. Every yeah. One of my classes brought that up a bunch of times. The recruits fly? Yes. Yeah. Um, and then, and, and here's what was huge, and this is a really good one for any agents that maybe are currently on their own and they're wanting to, to grow, maybe they want to grow a team, but they want to grow their sales. He said, you've got to get an admin. He says 60% of this job is ad, administration type work. So either get yourself a virtual assistant or find somebody in the office that's good at that because your focus should be um, on lead generation, good client care, and making the vision, you know, that's that's we said that's what your job is. And, you know, he's the the paperwork is not your job because you're probably not very good at it, like myself. You know? can, can I ask you real quick? Because there might be some people who might not be ready for a full time admin. Was there any suggestion as far as virtual assistants or anything like that down there? Um, what do you remember? Did they talk about my our my out desk? My out desk was there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, they talked about virtual assistant. Uh, my my classes said virtual assistant for just strictly marketing. You shouldn't have client contact. It should be you doing the client contact. But virtual assistants 
definitely for like marketing, Craigslist, getting your SEO up, that kind of stuff, but not for clients. Mm -hmm. That's good. And, and basically, Gene also said, um, basically, you're trying to get the referral. It's not about the sale. He says, so um, focus on great client care, build a massive repeat and referral pillar. Um, it's the most predictable, predictable income source, low cost per deal when built right, and then check on your customer satisfaction during your listing and your buy side. We started like the five day honeymoon thing on the, the listing side, but he had a great idea for um, after a closing. Each week, and he says this is, should be something that your um, admin does, and then he makes the final call. So he has five touches after closing each week. So basically the admin calls and says, hi, you know, Gene, it's, it's um, Steph Nicole, Stephanie asked me to call you. She wants to see how things going on the new house. And he said, they probably need a painter. They probably need a flooring person. They probably need all that. And they're, you know, unpacking and they're excited. So she calls every week for five weeks. And then that sixth week, he's calling. And then but one of the things that he says is, um, let me see what it was. Oh, um, are you getting the service that you think that your friends and family um, should, should be treated? And if so, is there someone that I can call that we can help do the same great job we did for you? Repeat that again. Okay, let me go back to, um, when, they, when they call, it says, are you being treated the way your family and friends should be treated? That's during, like, when you're having a transaction. And then it says, um, great, well, who do you know that are your friends and family that would love to be treated the same way that we could call? I thought it was a great line. It's a great way to ask for a referral, but yet not being, you know, asking for the deal. A little more passive. Mm-hmm. But his biggest thing was get over people leaving you. He says they probably maybe weren't the right fit. Hire talent that's better than you. But the big thing is he says develop a team of specialists. Each go to mastery. He goes, let them focus on if they're buyer specialists, they should know the contract backwards and forward. They should know the inventory. Be the best that you can be. And he says when you start crossing the list side and the buy side, they're normally not better. They're not good at both. You know, so he said really focus on that. And uh, he said, focus on your on their top talent within your team. Don't waste time on fi fixing weaknesses because everyone's going to have weakness. But he says, if they're talent in your team, focus on their top talent. Um, yeah, he, he was awesome. If you guys ever get a chance, and I will share the notes from this because I took like eight pages of notes from this last week. So, That's she awesome. Gets to talk um, here, here I go running without a net, and please don't hate me, Stephanie. Mm -hmm. um, what are you doing tomorrow from uh, 12.30 to 1.30? Am I doing something tomorrow from 12.30 to 1.30? Jesse, do you know? Did I forget? Legion. 